I put a put a bobber up this weekend. I, I not not like all installed, but I. I <laughs> what's going on here? Um, these guys. Um. No. Wow. Grassy, the outdoor. Man. These things are heavy. Yeah. Which which one is it? Is is the outdoor right? Yeah, this is the outdoor. The indoor is probably uh, two thirds the size. And yeah. A lot lighter. Oh yeah! Look at those wicked cooling fins, cast in. Yeah, it. This it's impressively put together. A, a, a quick. Yeah, that's a that's four, the three. only hatch that opens. So, so everything's sort of set up to be done outdoors. So there's this sort of hatch on the side that is downward facing. Um, big old seals in there, and then a port here, the only thing that it takes is power over ethernet. So you basically try to keep everything indoors and then one cable to the box. So should be a pretty straightforward install. Um, I think the GPS antenna is integrated into this thing, I guess, because there was no separate GPS antenna for this one, whereas the indoors did have that. I don't think these cross into height restriction without the CBRS certification level. Like I, I was understanding these were under that. Jay says 20 feet. So it's probably in the docs that I didn't read. Travis, I was just asking in chat if anyone wanted to see my map or demo and there is actual interest. I thought everyone would have seen them already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I've got everything teed up here. So. Cool. All right, we should see like, okay, so this is just a, I'm gonna kind of do like a really quick run through of putting together one of these cube cell mappers. So for context, um, well actually Tim Laws at Helium House, he uh, accidentally gave me his mapper. So yeah, yeah, so uh, this is gonna go out to him, but it needs to be flashed. Um, so what's going on in here is there's the cube cell um, and then a battery. And then uh, this is the antenna that comes with the cube cell. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on on the back inside there. Uh, and I'm just gonna use uh, Kiko's got this really great repo put together that I just kind of jumped to. I don't even think about my own mapper software anymore because our mapper community has built such great stuff. Um, if you're doing a T-beam, there's the Max Plastics one and there's sort of all sorts of Everyone's put all the versions. Um, so I've I've gone on, gone ahead and downloaded all of this, but it's actually some pretty great documentation in this repo here. So it's the end of it. Um, and the cool thing is, there's not really a whole lot to do in here. Um, there is one distinction, which is that the cube cell. This is specific to these devices. Uh, there's two different versions of the board. So there's the 1.0 version and there's a 1.1 version. And I'm seeing on my boards, um, well, it's under this little green flag, but it's a version 1.1. So I've got this part uh, uncommented so that it's leveraging this library instead of the older version there. Uh, beyond that, you can change some settings if you wanna like, change some default stuff. Otherwise, all this stuff is configurable in menus, I believe. Um, the only thing that we actually need to interface with here, other than that um, version configuration, is our keys. So I've gone ahead and just created a couple of quick devices in Helium console. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one here. I'm going to have to go change all this stuff again later, share my keys. Um, but what I've done is I just expanded these out so it shows them in the hexadecimal format. Uh, and I'm just gonna copy each and one of these. So our device UI is gonna go right here. App key, this is where normally you'd have the magic television. Maybe get better like dad jokes and stuff for when I'm doing tedious stuff. That's there. Um, 
And then this is plugged into my USB port right now. So all I actually have to do is hit upload. And this should work. So we can cross our fingers. So it's flashing, uploading. Screen just went blank. It's a good sign, I think. There we go. If you're putting this on the YouTube, you got to promise to cut all this part out, Travis. Cool. And yeah, it's uh, it's joining the LoRaWAN network. So that worked. Um, but there's one more step to do, which is to add our decoder. And I believe we have stuck that stuff here. So I'm just going to copy this block here. I'm going to flip over to Helium console, and we're going to add a new function. So add a new function. I'm going to call it like custom decoder. This is new. This is great to see. Yeah. Doesn't like that name. Custom, this is great. New features all the time. I don't think we need to change anything in here. Should be good. Save this function. And then I don't think I've actually added the integrations yet either. So let's go ahead and pull that up. So we're going to the documentation for the Helium coverage mapping project. Um, flip down here to configuration basics, mappers API. So we've got this address here. And what we can do is create a new integration. That is an HTTP integration. I realize I'm going probably very fast here. I think I've done this a hundred times at this point. So it's just going to be standard post and to this. We don't have to actually do any other special stuff here other than give it a name. Let's call it mappers. And just for fun, let's also add a classic cargo integration. Um, and this one already takes the Helium mappers payload that we defined in that function. So we don't actually have to do anything fancy for that one there. And then all it's a matter of doing is getting our devices. So we called that one, this is the TL mapper. We can take both of our functions. Oops, wait, what am I talking about? Not both of our functions. This goes away. Well, ignore this one. Uh, we're going to take both of our integrations. Oh, did I lose cargo? Maybe I didn't save it. Doesn't matter. Let's do this right now. Save it. Cargo integration. You got a click. I agree. Ah, thank you. Didn't have to agree last time I did this. Close. Yeah. Now we have come go. So this is actually all you should need to do from the console side. So what we did is we created a device, we created a function, this purple one here, and then we added these two integrations. And I believe this is joined now, so I should be able to reset my device. You can see the packet come through. It's trying to join, going to join accept. It is joined. Saw that come through on the screen. And now it's trying to get a GPS lock, which it's probably not going to do inside my house. But uh, 
that's it. We've created a mapper. So if I were to take this thing outside and go to cargo.helium.com, what we would see is pretty much just something that looks like any one of these other devices. Let's find somebody. They're out in the middle region. There, it could be just like this. So this is the cargo platform. It's a way to quickly see what things are doing there. And then our mapper data, that was our other integration, would get added similarly. So we would see the hexagons coming into space as those get added. Any questions? What did I miss, Neil? That's maybe a better question. You, you didn't miss anything, but I have a question for you. How come Mappers sure. isn't an automated integration, a pre-built integration yet? Is that just time? Or? That's actually, well, we see some funny stuff, which is that people will add integrations just for the sake of adding integrations. So if you look at the cargo platform, there's a lot of like LGT 92s, which if I remember correctly is a temperature and humidity sensor, or am I thinking of a different one? But people will take just like any random device and add integrations. And that's not the kind of data that we'll want coming into the mappers platform. So it's kind of nice right now, but it's uh, an intentional step. Um, but truly for anyone that's doing asset tracking, adding that mappers platform is a really good way to contribute to the overall helium coverage map, which I know you know all about. So I'm excited to see more of this. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's always the mappers channel. If anyone has any questions about this kind of stuff, there's a ton of people that have, are probably way better at it than I am now these days because I have not kept up with all the cool libraries and things that people are building. So, um, but yeah, really fun way to learn how to build something on Helium. Hey, thanks for that, Joey. Appreciate it.